It is the mother's responsibility to take care for, help, and protect her baby. But what if I show you a situation where the roles have been reversed? Here's a baby that made a real miracle for his mom within days of being born. After Jeremy and Shelly went out a couple of times, Jeremy says he could already say she was going to be his wife. They got along great and shared the same values. He did not delay in proposing marriage. She said yes, and they celebrated a great wedding that the groom described as a dream come true. The wedding was everything I imagined it would be, and she's all I want in a woman. In fact, I am a very lucky man. After getting married, the next thing on their list was having babies. And a few months later, the woman realized she was pregnant. Instead of sharing the good news on a call, Shelly chose to hold a small party to tell her husband he was going to be a father. Jeremy was very excited. The couple was counting the months for the arrival of their baby. Her pregnancy progressed smoothly until one day she attended her periodic review. At the beginning of the pregnancy, doctors had diagnosed a blood clot. This clot and other complications were paralyzing her system. The medical team had always thought that she would give birth to her baby naturally, but now the situation has changed. The doctors told her that if she did not have a C-section, she and her baby would not survive. The couple discussed the procedure and the wife was quite skeptical. Emergency C-section was the option. We talked about it a lot. She didn't want to do it. She didn't think she would wake up. She prayed to God and she accepted the surgery. While she was lying on the stretcher, she was preparing for the surgery. The expectant mother began to cry and told the medical staff the same thing she had told her husband, that she was afraid not to wake up. Her husband had to hold her hand and pray with her to reassure her. The team of Carolina's Medical Center Northeast thought it was going to go like any other surgery. However, things didn't go as expected. The surgery lasted a couple of hours, and from there, everything went downhill. Shelley said, Once I had the baby and the placenta removed and everything else, they thought that weight was holding the blood clot in my leg. She believes that when they lifted that weight, the blood clot had nothing to stop it and went to her lungs, which is a pulmonary embolism. This is a blockage in one of the pulmonary arteries in her lungs. In most cases, pulmonary embolism is caused by blood clots that travel to the lung from deep veins in the legs or from veins in other parts of the body. And this is what happened to Shelly. Without the baby to block it, the new mother's lungs filled with fluid. Jeremy said, at some point, the little fluid in her lungs became a lot, and all the doctors I spoke to said that if she hadn't already been incubated and asleep, she would have died. Everything happened so fast. The doctors have theories about what was going on. Something related to Shelly's hormones during pregnancy changed the way her blood clots. The 24-year-old woman's life was hanging by a thread. They could have lost her if they hadn't anesthetized her before, put her in an induced coma. Her husband was desperate. He didn't know what to do since his wife's life was in danger. He prayed all he could, but he was also worried because he had just lost the love of his life. He remembered what Shelley told him before the surgery. He felt guilty because she said she wasn't sure, as she didn't think she was going to wake up. He encouraged her, and now it seems that what she said could happen. Then he called his daughter Rylan. He declared that it was a name they had agreed upon before she was born. Rylan was fine, she was very healthy, but her father was unhappy because her mother had not come to see her. Ten days after the birth of the girl, there was no improvement. Jeremy explains that he could sense that the medical team was losing hope. The doctors had done everything they could, and it was clear they thought they were losing her at that time. They didn't say it, but we could see it on their faces. They all take a breath and walk away to give us time, he said. And unless there is a miracle, he'll lose his wife forever. With such a bleak situation, one of the nurses made a suggestion. Ashley Manis suggested that they try skin-to-skin -skin contact. We are in favor of skin-to-skin -skin contact. We think it has great benefits and we think it can't hurt. So we could try it, she said. This technique is called kangaroo care. Most hospitals recommend skin-to-skin -skin contact especially for premature babies. The mother's body functions as a natural incubator for the baby. Some of its benefits are better mental health development, a healthy weight, and easier breastfeeding. 
Unlike most situations, Nurse Ashley suggested she turn the script around and see if putting the baby on her mother's breast could save her. She thought that if the mother heard her daughter cry, she might come back. I was hoping that Shelley would go on and feel her baby and hear her and her mother's instinct come out, Ashley said. But getting the baby to cry wasn't going to be as easy as they thought. Instead of crying or making noise, Rylan got very comfortable and just slept. It was like she knew she could be trusted. The nurses had to tickle and sting her for about 10 minutes before she finally cried. And when she did, a real miracle occurred. We made Rylan cry as much as she could, and we prayed that it was clear that the doctors and nurses also took their time to pray. We could see a spike in her vital signs on the monitor. We knew that somewhere she was listening to her baby. Her heart rate improved. They told us that she knew Rylan was there, that she was reacting to Rylan's presence, and that reacting helped her fight, Jeremy said. Isn't it amazing? The girl just saved her mother's life. It was another week before Shelley came out of the coma. Nurse Ashley described the whole situation as a miracle and can only agree with it. A month later, Shelley and Rylan were discharged from the hospital. When she was finally able to leave the hospital, she was greeted by more than 200 friends, family and supporters wearing purple Team Shelley shirts. The group also prayed for the mother and daughter. Shelley was transferred to Carolina's rehabilitation northeast of Concord. Her rehab lasted six months before she was very healthy again. Shelley says her daughter makes her very happy, and that's all she wanted. People tell me all the time that if they knew that the next child they were going to have is going to be like Rylan, then they would want to have another child. But they know that not all children are like that, and maybe they wouldn't be so lucky, she said. Rylan celebrated her first birthday months later. Her parents prepared a big party in the presence of her family and friends. Her story was also shared on the internet and caught the attention of thousands of people around the world. Shelly and her family are all healthy, and she has gone back to nursing school to study what she likes. What do you think of this family's history? See you next time!